Welcome to Brian's Action Figure Reviews and today I've got another pop culture interview for you today. That's a lot of today's. But um, here we've got, up next I've got my friend who is a musician and a beat maker and he goes by the name of Sam and I'll just let him talk and he can tell you what he's all about. So here's my interview with Sam. Enjoy guys. Hello everyone. Welcome to Brian's Action Figure Reviews. Today, as I said in my intro, we have Sam. Sam, say hello to everybody. What's up, y'all? So, Sam, just give us um, a brief background and tell us what you do and what you're into and stuff. Uh, I like to. I'm happy to. Uh, my name's Sam. I'm, uh, I'm from Belgium. Uh, I'm a sound engineer as a profession. Uh, I also make my own music. And, of course, I'm a toy collector and a, a full-time geek. Um, <laughs> I know Brian from the, the Dork, the Daily Dork Facebook group. And I think we did some transactions in the past. I think I got a few figures I got from you uh, up in the details here. Uh, and yeah, man, that's that's basically it. That's uh, basically what I do and who I am. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on to the show anyway. And uh, thanks for let's, inviting. Get some, let's get some questions going. OK, so I'm going to ask you the same questions I ask everyone. Because the answers are always really interesting. So, action figures growing up, what did you collect? Uh, well, actually, I didn't collect really anything because I really started collecting uh, when I got my own place. It's just like the space. I didn't have the space when I lived at my parents. Uh, what I remember what I mostly got were like those 12-inch uh, action mans. They were, they were like G.I. <laughs> Joes, but they weren't, they weren't the official G.I. Joes. Um, I got a, I got a lot of those. I remember that. Um, and then once I got older, I started like getting to know more about more articulated figures in the smaller scale. But I never had like the the three inch uh, GI Joe figures or whatever. Being from Belgium is a big part of that because we don't get the same toy lines as they get over in the USA and in the UK. So we really had to make do with, with what we got. And that was all very, very basic and all very, very small stock. Um, I think the most things I had besides the Action Men were uh, Transformers. Oh, and awesome. A lot of Transformers, yeah. But again, it weren't the classic, uh, the classic Transformers like uh, the Autobots and like the G1 series. Uh, I started getting to know them uh, with the Beast Wars series. Nice. Yeah. And me and my brother, I think we had... I think we had them all because those were the only things that you could really collect because they were well stocked up in Belgium. Everything else was just, yeah, like we had some Marvel figures. I remember I had like a Spider Man and, and a Wolverine, but like those were really hard to find over here. And that, that's really funny because that was actually my next question that I was going to ask you was um, I, I kind of knew the, the action figure market in Belgium and across Europe wasn't as developed as we'll say as yeah, the uk yeah. definitely not definitely not i think I, I don't know why that is man i think that's because maybe because you guys are closer to the usa than we are um but that's really like the difference between because i i only started noticing that because i got a lot of friends over in the uk because of the, oh. the toy groups and i also I, I i lived in london for the first eight years of my life so i i come over a lot but when i started this collecting thing um I noticed the difference, like like Forbidden. Pl we don't have Forbidden Planet over here and stuff like that. Like we have a few comic shops that sell action figures as well, but no one is specialized in collectibles. And the, the few people that tried over here, they they never survive, man. Like their shops. Oh. I, I remember one shop in my city over here. I think it was, he was he was able to stay open for like two years and then he had to shut down, because it's impossible to sell over here. Like you have to ask like. 40 euros for a legend yeah you know, it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like uk isn't that far off though price wise um mm. but but yeah no it's 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 better now like we have a big comic shop over in antwerp um and i know the owners well so we started talking and ever since they took over they've been starting to get a lot of more newer uh, Marvel Legends in and Marvel Select and like they're really they're not aiming it's not their core focus but they are giving it enough uh, attention yeah, yeah. so it's not like 
let me say about three, four years ago, I would say that it was impossible to get new religions over here, and that's no longer the case, thankfully. So it has. It, it has it, it's pretty much the same here. There's, um, the nearest forbidden planet to me is Dublin, and that's a two-hour drive away. Oh yeah, <laughs> and even yeah. even yeah, then, the prices are so high. Like <laughs> it's the same over here, man. Like if you don't live in Antwerp, there's no nowhere else that I know in Belgium. That um, like we have like the comic shop over here is the biggest comic shop of Belgium, but like there's there's nothing. I know there's a few smaller comic shops, and then a few uh, a few shops that focus on novels more, like graphic novels and and the Belgium. And then, like we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of Belgium typical Belgium comics like uh, like Lucky Luke. Uh, the I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or or the Smurfs. Smurfs is a Belgium IP. Um, what else do we got? That's uh, oh, Tintin, like those oh, yeah, things. yeah, that's that's Belgium as well. So, but you, you know, you're not gonna find those. I mean, you, you are gonna find them, but in smaller quantities in the, the American comic shop. But there are also like Flemish comic shops where you can get those yeah. if, if that's what you fancy. Um, but yeah, man, it's 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 a struggle. I'm like, uh, thank God for for deliveries and and web shops because otherwise it would yeah. be impossible for people to to just yeah get their stuff um what will be your prized possession in your collection at the moment my pro most prized position at the moment well at the moment i have to say like the buster sword that uh, me and my buddy awesome. made yeah it's it's i mean i'm not sure if you can see it well on camera i'm not going to take it out because i'm not afraid i've seen pictures of <laughs> Yeah, like me and my buddy made it, and, and it's fucking amazing. Like that's especially with the game releasing this week. Uh, I gotta say that's my most prized possession right now. Uh, figure wise, who? That's a tough one, man. Because uh, I tell hard to pick one. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to pick one because my my favorite figure always tends to like moves with, so with what I'm watching at the time or what I'm into at the time. <laughs> Well, I have um, I have like a, a custom uh, Robo Duck figure from the Ducktales series. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You you've probably seen it in the groups. Uh, it's made by uh, Emily Darth Thomas, by the way. Shout out to him. And uh, I'm not gonna take it out. The, I'm not gonna take it out of the cabin right now. But it's yeah, it's amazing. It's a one of a one of a kind piece. It's uh, almost fully sculpted, um, painted beautifully, and yeah, it's it's just perfect actually so i think figure wise that's that's still my most prized uh, piece definitely um, another question i usually ask if um if you could have any figure right from any franchise in the world ever that hasn't been made um who would you who would you get and who would you get to make it that's also something that that differs uh with the times uh like for now I'm hell bent on getting uh, a decent six inch line of the Final Fantasy VII characters. Yeah. And like, I don't really care who makes it. I mean, of course, if I was to choose, I would give the license to uh, SHF, uh, but Square is never going to do that. They're always going to keep it in house. And they're doing some good things with the Bring Arts line um, at the moment. So I'm pretty conf. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm dead sure that they're going to pick up uh, the Final Fantasy VII characters and bring them out in the in the bring arts line definitely so i'm looking forward to that awesome um okay so once we're here this will be the last thing um just plug plug yourself to death if you can <laughs> what what do i have to do plug yourself tell us all your websites and where we can find your music and ah, all that kind damn. of stuff i should i should have uh i should have write written, written that down so yeah um as some of you know, uh, I'm working on a third album at the moment. I make uh, lo-fi, uh, chill, uh, lo-fi uh, hip-hop, instrumental, solely instrumentals. And I use a lot of um, anime, video game, pop culture references, uh, voice samples and all that stuff in my music. So um, it's def definitely worth checking out if you're into anime, video games, whatever, and just like to chill. So I'm, I'm finishing up on that uh, right now. Uh, you can find me under the name uh, Shosen Beats. That's uh, S H, by the way, not C H. Um, and you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon. You name it, I'm there. Uh, I have a Bandcamp also, 
show some beats again uh, where you can find some unreleased singles so those are music pieces that are not on any of the albums um, and of course you can always find me on Instagram for my toy photography um, you can find me because I recently changed my name on Instagram you can now find me on the Shosen underscore B on Instagram but I'm pretty sure you'll put everything in the description uh, or it'll all be in the description below yeah. um, <clears throat> You touched on it there, the Thai photography. What got you into that? Um, well, I have to think back now because uh, I think I, I remember. So, like, we ha I'm going to tell you the whole story here. I, I, so the moment I left home and I went to live on my own, I started, like, I was already getting some Marvel Selects in. And then I started to really collect marvel select so i started to order them and there was like i said there was a shop downtown that sold them so i really got into like i, I liked the way they looked because they were like movable statues um articulation wasn't that great so i really so i really was into the marvel selects and then also and then just by googling i think i came across uh Shardimus prime uh, his YouTube channel, and then I was like, "Oh shit!" Like people actually review these toys. That's that's awesome because then you know beforehand what you're gonna get. Yeah. And funnily enough, like the guy you interviewed last week, uh, Michael McGrath, I met him. I met him through uh, a Facebook post on Shardimus Prime's no, a YouTube comment on Shardimus on one of Shardimus <laughs> Prime's videos. And we got to, we got talking to each other, and uh, yeah, we've been friends for like five, six years now online. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then through the channel of Shardimus Prime, I found the channel of uh, Book Nice, Book Nice Ten, and like some of you may know, he's like the the creator, the father of uh, ACBA. So through yeah. Book Nice, I I came in in contact with ACBA, and I'm like, what the hell? Like I always wanted to do like scenes with my figures and, and first I wanted to do like stop motion. But then when I saw this ACBA group, I'm like, damn, like that's actually what I want to do. I'm not, I'm not really want to make videos cause that's always going to be wonky, but this, photo <laughs> yeah, but this picture taking thing, this photography is pretty, pretty cool. And you can get some pretty awesome results. Of course, at the beginning, I did not get awesome results. <laughs> Far from I'm <laughs> yeah, man. If you look at my first pictures, uh, they're pretty, pretty bad. But yeah, that's the same with everyone. But yeah, man. So I got into contact with ACBA. I looked them up on Facebook, and I just started. Like first, I used my my iPad, and I was starting to take extremely crappy pictures of my of my uh, my figures. But then, as time moved on, and I, yeah, you, you just like every skill you improve. And of course, after then, I I, I noticed really fast that. Um, the Marvel selects weren't ideal for ACBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I started, like, I, I remember I bought my first legend because it was on sale. And I was like, okay, let me see what this is. Uh, it was um, uh, American Agent. Or what's his name? Like, US Agent. Yeah, US Agent. Um, and um, yeah, there, I was completely directly sold on the articulation. And start of, as of that moment, I didn't buy any Marvel Selects anymore, and I completely focused on, on Legends and started working on my posing game. And now we're, I think I've been doing this for like four years now. If, it's, if it isn't longer, yeah, it's about four years, like three, four years I've been doing this. Um, no, it's longer. It's seven years, because I started in 2013. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember that now, because I was looking at older Facebook posts of me yesterday, and I noticed that the first the first picture I took uh, I posted was in 2013. So I've been doing this for seven years now. But it's ups and downs. Yeah, it's ups and downs, man. It's not like something I do on the daily or whatever. You don't feel the years gone, do you? No, definitely not. Definitely not. But but yeah, it's fun, man. It's really fun, and I I can I can like really encourage everyone with figures that likes to pose them just just to do it because it's. Uh, yeah, it's really fun when it comes when it works out. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, when it works out. <laughs> when it works out, yeah. When it, does, when it doesn't work out well, a lot. <laughs> well, um, if you can, you can send me some pictures and I drop them at the end of the video as well that you've done. In that's the past. A good, 
That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll do that, man. I'll send you a few high risk ones, and then you can uh, make like a slideshow at the end. It's a good idea. Awesome. I'll send you some so, music as well, and you can use it as like an outro theme or whatever. Oh, awesome. Thanks very much, dude. Yeah, you're welcome, man. And thanks very much for coming on. <laughs> it was a pleasure, man. It was a uh, first time for me doing this, so uh, I hope it works out, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing it online. <laughs> so, so thanks very much, Sam. We'll catch you again, all right? Definitely. See you later, Please. guys. Have a good one. Have a nice lockdown. And that was Sam by Factory. Um, sound engineer and ACBA artist amongst many other things as as usual I'm going to have all these links in the description and some music and stuff in the video so make sure you check it out and give them a follow on Instagram and all that kind of stuff and thanks once again for tuning in I hope you have a great day and stay safe peace out don't forget to subscribe bye Swinging a sword is totally passe. <laughs> <laughs>